Hello and welcome back to the studio here at uh, African Utility Week and I'm uh, joined now by Mark Biagi, uh, uh, Solutions Executive at Bentley Systems. Mark, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Uh, and uh, we were talking a little bit about S uh, off air about uh, uh, Bentley Systems or embracing new challenges and uh, you know, working with owner operators to almost go on that journey together uh, in a way to, for them to change the way they work. Just just talk us a little bit about, you know, what those are in terms of specific, well, not absolute specifics, but uh, sort of general specifics. Well, journey is an excellent way to yeah. put it, actually. Yeah. In fact, uh, some of our users refer specifically to the journey that they've gone on yeah. uh, in terms of, you know, addressing the challenges that they've had around operations and maintenance, around asset integrity, around asset reliability. Um, particularly, you know, the starting point may have been an incident, may have been an accident, it may have been a regulator uh, requiring additional output that simply wasn't available to them, it may have been investors, it may have been a, a recognition that, uh, that uh, they, were, they were lagging in terms of their asset management capabilities. And so we work with owner operators mm -hmm. like that to assist them to uh, develop reliability programs and re reliability understanding within the organization, taking them through a structured sort of reliability engineering process. That we so, w sorry to interrupt. So, yeah. so w when you talk about asset management, because uh, I'm conscious of the audience and, and we've got people talk about asset management in all sorts Absolutely. of different contexts. Yeah. You know, there's a asset management down to, um, you know, is. Uh, uh, my substation working yeah. optimally. Are, are, are you, when you say asset management, what are you talking about? Are you saying everything or? Well, we, so let, let me talk about our roadmap to operational excellence, mm. which is uh, how we go towards asset management. And really that starts at the project phase in the design and construction of infrastructure assets. So the whole project information management, how you're gathering data from all the multiple disciplines that are involved, during the design, during the construction, all the various contractors that may be involved in pulling together an asset. So that's the ideal case where we have the, the opportunity to influence a greenfield site. Mm -hmm. But then in asset management, we're really covering two things. First is asset lifecycle information modeling. So how owners manage the, all the engineering data and associated documentation relating to those complex infrastructure assets and the workflows and the change as the constant change that's happening within that, but to maintain a very robust information model around those plants. And, uh, and then secondly, just mm, to finish that mm. off, uh, the context of asset performance management. So right. once we start bringing in how the asset's actually performing, the time series data, the pressure in this pump here, the uh, temperature over there, trending that over time, so the time series data, relating to integrity, <coughs> relating to reliability, you know, corrosion, inspections, all those things. Uh, owner operators today are drowning in a sea of data coming mm. from so many different systems, SCADA data here, time series data there, other OPC data sources, inspection data. And the challenge for them is that these are often managed in different systems, they're all relating to different parts of the assets. So we work with them to understand from pulling that data together and relating it back to the individual assets, what are the most important data points for them to focus on in terms of what are the leading indicators that failure is about to occur, is likely to occur, yeah. and such that they can then start to really optimize and schedule the right inspection and maintenance activities of all the things that they could be doing which are the things that they really need to focus their attention on. And, and that's, uh, uh, that's kind of a lot like um, some of the, well, people have put it under this term big data, which is, you know, you yeah. don't get me started on that because well, there's a, a multitude of different definitions, but it's this idea of you can now join everything up and you can. that gives you maybe different predictive stuff or well, you can, but you know, part of the challenge really is that uh, you know, owner operators, as I say, there's so much data coming in, and oftentimes they won't necessarily have gone through a process of really stopping to think what are the most important data points. Mm. Now, if they've gone 
For example, uh, if you ask a vibration specialist, you know, where do we need to put the vibration sensors? They'll tell you everywhere. You know, they want vibration monitoring on absolutely everything. When the reality is that's probably not required. So what we're doing is actually taking a step back, going through a process of looking at the assets, looking at the business objectives of the owner operator and saying, what are all the different ways in which you can potentially fail to meet those objectives or the asset can fail? What's the likelihood of failure occurring? What are the consequences of failure occurring? And then what are the indicators that failure might occur? Is, is failure is starting to occur? And so how can we then from our reliability engineering knowledge know and plot where we are on that curve of potential failure such that we can start to influence of all the things that are going wrong at the moment you know, which are the things we really need to focus on because those are the ones that are most tied into our asset performance and our business objectives. So the, the, the complexity of putting something like that in mm. is, I suppose there the, are the two questions forming in my head. One is, how do you go to an owner manager and you know, at, at the end of the day, this is all about investment, return on investment and, and, and things like that. You know, what's the big benefit that they see when you go in and say, look, if, if you changed your view of the world yeah. to this, yeah. here is what you will get. Yeah. Um, what, what is that operational so efficiency? Those, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, those shifts from, you know, reactive maintenance or time-based maintenance to what we call a reliability-centered maintenance strategy have many benefits in terms of reducing overall operations and maintenance expenditure, certainly reducing unplanned shutdowns, as we know that that's a very large cost associated with that, um, increasing asset performance, increasing asset output, and also in increasing you know, stakeholder and regulatory approval, reducing insurance premiums. I mean, the, the, the lists uh, grow and grow, and uh, many of our significant clients are, you know, are getting absolutely um, massive cost benefits as a result and bearing in mind that one of the interesting things is we're not suggesting that they start gathering more data. Oftentimes the data is already there, they're gathering it but they might not be gathering it in, a, in, a, in an optimal way. Or so the right bits. Or the right bits. Yeah. Or they're certainly, they might be gathering too much data so they mm. might be investing heavily in data infrastructure to manage lots of data that they're not then doing anything effective with. So there's, there's fat and inefficiency in the system there. So I mean, that sounds like the very, very early days of the web when everybody was counting hits. Right. And then people realized actually it's a page impression that you should be counting because right. each, each page, depending on how it's constructed, can generate 50,000 hits. Now that's another that's interesting yeah. aspect to yeah. it. If you think about that web or you were talking yeah. about a big data approach, yeah. I mean, we're not looking at replacing systems with you know, the mother of all databases. Yeah. Quite the opposite. Actually, we adopt a federated approach. What we're doing is pointing to the data that already exists, but yeah. we're referencing it correctly. And what we're also doing, I mean, companies will spend uh, a lot of money potentially sending um, their technicians and maintenance staff and donor operators on uh, reliability training and they'll help them understand and quite often that's a paper based exercise and they'll go through failure modes and effects analysis, they'll go through bow tie XP, they'll go through all these different methodologies mm. but the problem is oftentimes that ends up in a big folder on the top shelf Never and doesn't used. get referred to yeah. whereas what we're doing is we're actually capturing that knowledge bringing that into a platform, a technology platform, that embeds that uh, reliability knowledge at the heart of the operational and maintenance decision making. So you guys can let people simulate scenarios and stuff like that? on well, the basic scenario basis simulation is, is part is of it. I mean, I mean, there is an element of that. It's yeah. quite formalized, particularly in South Africa, very yeah. strong on uh, risk-based inspection, which is a way of uh, you know, predictive maintenance technology. Yeah. So that's where you're looking at for a particular design context of a plant mm. and you're looking at a particular set of process conditions, where is the failure likely to occur? Because you can't possibly go out and inspect everything all the time. No, absolutely. And it's yeah. very expensive to do yeah. so. So instead you're, you're looking at how we optimize that inspection process. Mm. Um, and you know, so for example, one of our major clients uh, is Shell and uh, we've worked very closely with them to develop a new corrosion inspection management system which couples both with the risk-based inspection mm. process, which was traditionally handled by one team in one department, 
and the inspection management system itself, which was handled by another team in another department. And that's not a kind of one hit thing, it's an ongoing cycle. So managing that workflow, yeah. serving up the engineering information to the right people, the right users in the right form, and developing asset health indices so that the managers of the site can know this asset safe. We're doing everything that we can and should be doing to keep this asset. That's safe. quite an intensive working relationship with the client, isn't it? Because you you have to have that constant feedback loop because you're constantly having to improve the Absolutely. way it works. Absolutely. You yeah. know, so we're very strong on this idea. You know, Bentley. We're a software company primarily, but we're very strong on the services as well, because this it really is. It's the it's the methodology and the strategy backed up by technology that's very important mm -hmm. for these kind of engagements. And, and you were s saying earlier on um, uh, that uh, you know people are seeing sort of massive cost savings across insurance premiums and, and all that sort of stuff. Do you, uh, is, is there a, a, a case where you've got a figure where can you say, oh, actually there was a X percent decrease? I mean, you may not have... Well, I can give you the example from um, Scottish Power. So Scottish Power have been working with them um, since uh, early uh, 2000s when actually they had a significant incident at uh, one of their major coal-fired plants mm -hmm. in Scotland, a 2,400 megawatt coal-fired plant called Longanet. Mm -hmm. And the incident there was the collapse of the coal conveyor that was entering the plant. And that was served as a wake-up call to Scottish Power, who then engaged our Aladon network of uh, reliability consultants to start that process of the journey that we mm -hmm. talked about earlier of um, how can we get better, how can we prevent this happening again? How can we get in better control of our asset? What are the various things we need to do? which led then to the deployment of our Ivara EXP uh, asset performance management technology based on that robust mm -hmm. reliability engineering project. And the results from them, I mean, it's since been rolled out to a number of other sites, are, are, are stark. I mean, it's uh, a 29% reduction in operations and maintenance costs over four years. Uh, there was a 50% reduction in, in unplanned shutdowns. Uh, you know, very, those, those very are, significant figures. Those are big numbers. Yeah, big absolutely. numbers. Big, big numbers. numbers. Uh, Mark, we're kind of coming to the end of our time here, and uh, we are at African Utility Week. So yeah. I, I, I'm going to ask you an obvious question. I mean, you, you you've. Uh, you said to me earlier you haven't had that much time to go down to the show floor. You've you've been engaging yeah, in, I've been uh, in various, you, you, interviews, yeah, various interviews. But uh, uh, what are the what are the things you're sort of looking forward to from uh, getting out of this event, or maybe even with the interviews you've had, where you're like, oh, this is a great uh, opportunity for us, or or anything like that. Well, I love these kind of events. I mm. mean, uh, particularly somewhere like uh, Africa, which is you know really. Um, building up so much and has the opportunity actually for a lot of the infrastructure to start on that with the best practice, you know, knowledge from all that learning that's happened by all the mistakes that have been made in the rest of they the They don't world. have to reinvent the wheel. They don't the have wheel. to reinvent the wheel, yeah. so we can really start. You know, we'd like to start working with uh, many of the owner operators here uh, in terms of, you know, understanding reliability-centered design, building those aspects starting with the end in mind effectively. That roadmap to operational excellence is really what we're talking about here. Um, so I'm looking forward to just meeting uh, opportunities and prospects from throughout Africa who you know, we're confident that we can work with and help them um, achieve you know, very high standards and, and you know, the best yeah. possible outcome for their infrastructure programs. Well, there's, uh, there's plenty of them here. And uh, uh, Mark, we are at the end of our time. So thank you very much for taking the time thank you. to uh, be here. And uh, we might have an outtake video of uh, uh, some of the other uh, things that happened prior to this interview. Right, but that's, a good <laughs> but, but let's, uh, uh, that's for another time. Thank you, thank you for watching. And uh, look forward to seeing you again on a, a other Angelati interview. And as I keep mentioning, there's lots of white papers and case studies for you to download by companies like uh, Bentley Systems and others who are uh, actively engaging in this community. So thank you for watching.